cut my throat just to breathe. Shed your clothes to see what's underneath. Finding it hard to believe. Guys. Constructed in 1913, St. Martin's is one of the oldest buildings in town, and therefore, naturally, one of the most haunted. Good morning, Father. A wide variety of supernatural sightings have been reported over the years. However, one ghost appears with a little more regularity than the rest. They call her the Weeping Woman. Have you seen her yet? Who, the tour guide? <laughs> the weeping woman. No. You will. All of you do eventually. Oh, sorry, Father. I probably shouldn't be smoking this close to a building so notorious for going up in flames. Oh, that's okay. You can, you can finish your cigarette. Oh, no. I'm trying to quit anyway. I wanted to come over and say hello. We we see each other so often, but we rarely get a chance to speak. Yeah, that's uh, that's my fault. When I'm not on the job, I'm smoking one of these. But I have been meaning to introduce myself properly and to say thank you. Most of the priests at St. Martin's haven't been too welcoming to our little historic tours. Mm. I don't think they like the ghost stories. Oh, I like the stories. My sister used to tell me ghost stories all the time when we were kids. That's nice. It's nice seeing you around here, um, entertaining the locals and the tourists. I wanted to let you know you're also welcome to join us on Sundays, if you like. Oh, that's okay, Father. I think I get my fair share of ghost stories during the week. Take it then you don't necessarily believe your ghost stories. I'll put it this way. I've been on this job for a while now, and I have yet to see a single ghost. I think you would know a ghost if you saw one. Guess I've never really thought about it. If you'll excuse me, Father, my congregation awaits. Some will tell you it isn't the entire church that is haunted. Many believe it is just this single pew. Most sightings of the weeping woman happen here. 
This pew, along with several others in the church, was imported from Bordeaux, France. During a time of persecution in France, a certain gypsy woman claimed sanctuary in the church. It is said she never left again, in life or in death. When the church was dismantled and demolished, she followed this sign of her safekeeping all the way to St. Martin's and weeps every night for her long lost home. Follow me. I haven't heard that version yet. No, it's one of the more popular ones. What's your favorite incarnation of the weeping woman, bag lady, gypsy? Oh, I don't listen to all that nonsense. So you're not a believer? Oh, that's where you're wrong. I know the weeping woman exists, and I know exactly who she is. You do? She's my grandmother. Why would your grandmother haunt St. Martin's? Why does anyone come to church? She doesn't want to go to hell. Why would you think your grandmother would go to hell? Her name is Imogene Almsworth. Don't get me wrong, Father, in life my grandmother was a saint. She fed the hungry, she clothed the poor, she founded numerous charities. But well, this city survived the Great Depression because of her relief efforts. But she was proud. When she was 60 years old, she was diagnosed with a certain neurological disease that would have given her a very undignified death. So she took matters into her own hands. Father, maybe you can help her. Could you give her absolution? I haven't even seen the weeping woman. But if you do see her... I'll see what I can do. And Father, Father, if you do see her, could you please tell her? Please tell her for me how much I miss her. We are all now it might be a hard way As long as I'm with you Good morning, Father. Do you sleep all right? I wouldn't let anybody catch you sitting here. This is her pew. Oh, of course. Is it Sunday? Yes, but don't get too excited. I'm just here because I lost my cell phone. I thought I might have left it in the sanctuary. Maybe uh, she took it. Why would a ghost take a cell phone? To get you here on a Sunday, perhaps? Is that what she would want, or is that what you would want, Father? I will admit it would make me very happy to see you here at one of our services. I hope you'll uh, consider coming next Sunday. I've got a different kind of sermon planned. I think you might find it interesting. I'll consider it, but that's all I'll say. I thought I heard her weeping last night. 
It was probably just the air conditioning. The first time I heard it kick on, I thought it might be her, but that's all it was. Just the air conditioning. You could be right. Come back, guys. St. Martin's has burnt to the ground on two separate occasions, once in 1928 and again in the 1980s. Both fires resulted in near total destruction of the building. So the facade of this building has seen two major renovations. We are all now it might be a hard way As long as I'm with you <laughs> Ah, okay, okay, back to work it might be an arms way. What is it, Father? Oh, it's nothing, Natalie Is it something that your God said? It's the way she talks with her hands It kind of reminds me of someone Ghosts. You don't have anything to be worried about. Ghosts are just people who are having trouble letting go of the past and moving on. That's all. There was a certain young man. <clears throat> there was a certain young man. <clears throat> there was there was a certain young man man younger than me. There was a certain young... You startled me, Father. I, I didn't really think anyone would be here so late. I'm sorry, Marcia. Why are you here so late? I was doing some reading. Have you been putting off your sermon, Father? No, no, I, I assure you, I will be ready for tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Well, I don't think I really need any more practice. Shall we walk out together? So you still haven't seen the weeping woman? No, I haven't. Has anyone else spotted her? Not that I'm aware of. No one sits in her pew, do they? Oh, no, they wouldn't dare. And I wonder who could have left these here. There was a certain young man, a man even younger than me, <laughs> this young man had a sister whom he loved very much. He saw friends come and go, and he lost both of his parents to a tragic accident. 
But through it all, he had his sister. From the time they were youngsters, they shared a bond of pure, unconditional love. But as they grew older, she began to get tired. The young man watched the light in her slowly getting dim until one day God blew it out like melted candle. The young man's life started to burn out as well. He tried to soothe himself with drugs. Some were prescribed by doctors, others he came by through other means. He began to live recklessly, caring for no one, not even himself. One day, the young man found himself locked in his college dorm room with a Bible on one knee and a pistol on the other. He resolved to read that Bible till he found something that would bring him some relief. He read all night, but he could not find a verse to give him any comfort. So he picked up his pistol, but he didn't fire it. He didn't even cock it, because the light that had burned in his sister had caught fire in his own soul. He realized his choice wasn't between a pistol and a Bible. It was between faith and hopelessness. And every morning, he makes that choice again. He continues to light a candle for his sister. He continues to choose hope. It is not a hope without uncertainty. It is the tiniest flicker of a hope. And it casts shadows of doubt. But it keeps him warm. And the night of his gloom, it keeps him warm. It helps him see his way ahead. If you all open up your hymnals to page 282. No, 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 don't be frightened. I want to help you. Who are you? Thank you for turning Mrs. Preston to us, Father. We do try to keep a close eye on our patients, but we've been understaffed lately. Sometimes mistakes happen. I understand. 
How is she? Her case is pretty far along. She'll probably be going soon. I see. She's wandered off before. We found her in a church that time, too. All she seems to do these days is pray. I suppose God is the only one who understands her now. She still lights a candle for her husband, Mark. We don't allow her matches, but somehow she always seems to find one. Sounds like she's lost a lot. It's no wonder she prays so much. I look at it this way. She's lost her family and most of her mind, but she still has her faith. That's a sermon in itself, isn't it, Father? <laughs> Perhaps I should come and visit her. She would probably like that. Would keep her from coming and visiting you in the wee hours of the night. <laughs> do you like St. Martin's? Yes, I do. Does it bother you that it's haunted? No, not at all. I thought I saw her once. The weeping woman? I'm still sure it was her. What did she look like? Like living death. Haven't you seen her for yourself? No, I haven't. But I'll keep an eye out. It tends to happen when you least expect it. I think these belong to your patient. She might need them. No trouble today. <laughs>